The frightening appearance of the suits just hit me immediately, especially the way that it created a kind of anthropomorphic figure with um, some of the surgical masks look like duck bills, the, the goggles were often tinted, um, the, the figures looked otherworldly. And I thought, what would it be like if you were a patient looking at that? The PPE2 uh, put a lot of fear in the patients. We learn how we have to come and calm the patient, talk to them, let them know why we are wearing the PPE, and tell them it's not because we hit them or, you know, something. Tell them why we're wearing it. That's what I sensed from, from the accounts of people being separated from their families, not being able to touch your loved ones, um, being forcibly taken away, uh, isolated, and not seeing a human face for days on end. I thought there is a simple photographic solution that could mitigate this problem. When I got back to Los Angeles, I put everything else aside and I, this was what I did from dawn till dusk. I threw myself into this project. The project involves taking a portrait, a headshot, cropped very closely, and printing it fairly large. Um, the, uh, my idea was to have a minimum four by five inches, possibly four by six inches, and place it on the chest area of the, the personal protective equipment. I knew that it was absolutely crucial that this be integrated in a non-invasive way into the donning process. The donning process was, it was a life or death situation. When I got to Liberia, uh, I was surprised to learn that this one ETU that had the greatest amount of remaining patients in the country in February when I went there, there were 120 staff members. I was, I was pretty taken aback. I wanted to make good on my promise of coming back with labels. I photographed people in the morning and came back later that night with the first round of labels to get people started. Then I learned there were, there were three more teams. <laughs> so ultimately, we got people supplied with enough labels to last for a little while, and then I trained other people at the Ebola treatment unit to take over to to print their own labels. Most of them cannot read and write, so they were not ready reading the label. But for the photos, they would say, wow, it was amazing. You know, they were just looking you know, looking at us. And we say, this person is, oh. I saw, I said, well, she recognized a man and the PPE work. She said, oh, let me look at the picture. And she looked at the picture clearly. She said, yes, she recognized me. All of the uh, qualitative information coming out of the ETU was that, um, that it was positive. Um, the patients loved being able to see an image of the healthcare worker's face. Um, the healthcare workers said even very sick patients um, looked at the picture and then looked up at their eyes in the goggles, looked at the picture and then back at the goggles, you know, and, and looked back and forth trying to reconcile Another doctor who was decommissioning an Ebola treatment unit when I finally met him said, I wish that we had had these sooner. He actually came out and said, these would have saved lives.